pay again. Um, well, as you guys can see, I'm starting to have a flare. It's a little bit different than earlier today. So the redness still primarily in the same places at the moment hasn't gone um, hasn't gone too far, but uh, certainly starting to warm up. Um, right now, it feels like the beginnings of a bad sunburn. Um, I would anticipate if this is going to have any type of duration um, or I'm sorry, or be a rough flare that it's going to be um, more widespread in the ear and down my neck and possibly my nose. Um, it's pretty crazy sometimes where and how it starts. Sometimes it'll start like right here, like candle wax and just kind of run under my skin and then spread across. Um, sometimes the breath from my nose will flare my nose up and then you, you'll see it start to turn red here and then my lips and then it'll either come down to my chin or start somewhere else. Um, it just, it, it can be really random and sorry if I'm not looking directly at the camera or using a lot of vocal pauses like, um, and what have you, but I'm not uh, a performer, <laughs> so uh, it's not something that I'm good at. Uh, so to tell you a little bit more, you know, I originally had a diagnosis of chronic idiopathic urticaria. My symptoms for that started, I'd say around June of 2006. The first time I noticed I was um, sunbathing, um, I was a lot smaller, I was much more athletic, um, and I liked to lay out in the sun. So I had, you know, I don't know, sun tanning oil and stuff all over me and I'm laying out and then all of a sudden I noticed a couple of um, itchy spaces on our spots on my face and I was like okay that's weird so I got up I went inside I looked at my face and I had a couple of little tiny red spots there were they were not raised at all they were just flat but they were a little bit itchy and I was like I wonder if it's my sunscreen I you know I, I had never had anything like that happen so I washed my sun tanning wheel off and I decided to just give myself a break with it and it wasn't that long after that that I was working out and I think I was either doing like, I don't know, like leg kicks or something or, or lifting weights and same thing happened. And I was like, that's weird. Looked in the mirror, saw a couple spots. And like, as soon as I cooled down, they went away. I was like, well, that's strange. So over the next four years, I would say that happened periodically, um, only on my face and only when I was exerted or hot. Um, if I was cleaning house for more than a couple hours, I'd notice like anywhere from four to six spots on my face, a little bit itchy. As soon as I cooled down, they would go away. And, um, you know, I, it didn't bother me enough or concern me enough to do anything about it. I had started backing off working out. Um, I was, I, I guess, doing some avoidance measures, but, um, but no, no medical search. And I didn't have insurance at the time, so there probably wasn't a lot that I, that I would have done at that point. Well, in 2010, uh, I started noticing like an underlying red current, you know, uh, under my skin, like under my arms and my chest, just kind of, kind of red. And it would be when I'd get, get warm. It did, wasn't burning or anything, but I would notice more of a redness. And I was like, this is, this is weird. Uh, I didn't know what was going on. My still stuff happening every time I warmed up with my face. So I went to see my primary care doctor at the time and she laughed and was like, well, maybe you're allergic to work. Ha ha ha. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's funny. But no, really, you know, I mean, is there somebody I can see about this? Because it's an issue. So she sent me to a dermatologist and they were like, that's not dermatology, let's try allergies. So they sent me to an allergist and it was a pretty old school um, doctor. And he was like, well, let's do a test. So he took a tongue depressor, you know, glorified popsicle stick, broke it in half. Um, and then scratched a couple of lines zigzaggy on, you know, my 
forearm, in her forearm, and, and, um, and waited and about five to ten minutes later you know those scratches were welted up and he was like you have urticaria and it's chronic idiopathic urticaria so it happens all the time we don't know why uh other than it's triggered by heat he told me to take a zyrtec and um avoid getting exerted you know avoid heat and I was like eh, okay you know for a while I was I was pretty nervous I did some elimination diets back then I was like you know I read some stuff about chronic idiopathic urticaria triggered by heat that was a little scary and I was like I don't know about this um but I took my Zyrtec every day did it stop it no but um I I kind of knew just once I started having the little itchy spots or whatever, just to back off, you know, get get behind a fan, cool down. As soon as I cooled down, I was fine. I could still go hiking. I could still um, cut my grass. I could still go fishing and be out in the sun. I could go to the beach. I could, you know, get a tan. You know, I, I could still do all those things. I just had to, you know, not push it too far. Um... I think it was 2014 when I was having more trouble with it. So um, they put me on two Zyrtec a day. So then I was taking two. Um, I had noticed that when I was out walking or doing anything that was exerting for any long period of time that my hands would start to swell a little bit. My fingers especially, they would turn red. They would be warm to the touch. Um, swollen, uncomfortable. And I told my doctor and he was like, whoa. I think it's part of your urticaria, just stay the course, you know, and <laughs> just keep taking the Zyrtec, keep taking the Zyrtec, I was like, okay, you know, and, and that's as far as it went, I kept taking the Zyrtec, I, you know, feel like I missed signals my body was, was telling me about, I didn't have welts, I didn't have pustules, I didn't have bumps, or your classic raised hive outbreaks. It wasn't anywhere other than my face and my hands. Um, I did have a lot of pain in my feet, but I didn't have um, a lot of redness or, or burning at the time. Um, I also have some other conditions uh, around that time, you know, that really kicked in. Fibromyalgia um, was one of them. You know, but things kept trucking along. I took my two Zyrtec every day. I could still, as of 2020, you know, I was hiking in Gatlinburg. I went to Klingman's Dome and, you know, walked up their really steep slope all the way to the top of, you know, the mountain. And, you know, I was okay. Um, went to the beach, um, got seashells. I was okay. You know, cut my grass, same stuff I'd been doing, walk my dogs, you know, I, I living my life outside you know in the sun and life was okay um my hands might got got a little swollen here and there but it wasn't life altering and then in uh in january you know i woke up with a horrible um horrible pain in my stomach and you know i told my husband i was like something is wrong i need to go to the hospital I said i'm not not totally sure but it doesn't feel normal you know so he asked if he needed to drive me and I was like, no, you know, let me just go because I don't want you to miss work if it's, you know, something minor and I just think it's serious. So, so I drove myself to the hospital. I got there, you know, they at first thought it was my gallbladder. Um, so they checked that first and when they didn't see what they were looking for, um, they checked my appendix and they found that my, um, I had appendicitis, so they wanted to do surgery. Um, I was pretty freaked out. I'm not um, easygoing about things like that. I like having control. I don't ever like the idea of sedation. Um, so I definitely didn't didn't like the idea at all. And then I had this like scary horrible nurse who did the whole COVID brain swab. Um here here I am in like terrible pain with my 
appendicitis in like just got told I was going to have emergency surgery and that they're going to have to put me to sleep, which I would have preferred them to leave me awake. And then in comes, you know, Helga with her four foot long cotton swabs and starts, you know, going in for my brainstem, you know, and I'm gagging and coughing. And I, it, was, it was terrible. I was like, okay, you're gonna take that out of my nose. We're done. One nostril is all you get, get out. But you know, it was just really rough. Um, I didn't want to do it. I did not want to have the surgery. Um, I know that's immature. And but I, I didn't. It was I have several siblings. One of them, my older sibling, was like, appendicitis can kill you. You can't go home. If you leave, I'll beat you up. So <laughs> out of respect for my loving sister um, and the will to live, you know, and my kids and all that stuff, I decided to be a, a grown up and stay. And, uh, you know, this is more about my experience than my erythromyalgia and, and anhydrosis, but it, it, it gets us there. So, you know, my husband came, um, I was really, uh, really nervous. I asked them like, can you just do like an epidural and keep me awake? And they were like, no, uh, they came, they made me leave all my stuff in the hospital room. I'd take off my glasses, which I'm blind as a bat. So, you know, immediately I take off my glasses, the world disappears. So it's, you're very, feel very vulnerable, um, when you can't see people and you can't see their faces. So they take me down to the, like the basement where the operating prep area is and, um, you know, do all the stuff they're going to do to get me ready. And the anesthesia people come, um, and I try to ask them questions. And this guy, he's like one of those that when you ask them questions, they just want to talk louder, you know, to make you believe them more. So it's like, you'll ask a question and they'll answer even louder to just drive home the point. And it's like, you know, you can yell if you want, but you know, it doesn't make me believe it anymore. You know, so eventually I just had to bite the bullet and say, okay, whatever, you know, just do your thing. Uh, but then they left me there for like 40 minutes uh, because somebody else came in that needed surgery faster than I did. So I'm down there waiting for 40 minutes. And I was like, at first, just a nervous wreck. And then I was like, well, I'm here by myself. Can't see anything. Probably a good time to pray. Um, so I spent that 40 minutes in prayer and just gave it to God. Just whatever happens, giving it to God. And um, I calmed down, you know, as much as I could. And they came, they took me back. You know, I had the surgery. They woke me up. I had no idea why it felt like I swallowed glass. Nobody told me I was getting a scope. So, you know, I was intubated, um, I guess, when they did the surgery. So I could barely talk. My throat felt like I literally ate a cactus. Um, I was trying to stay off drugs. Like I was one of those people who never took anything. Like I took Zyrtec, I took Tylenol. I didn't want to take anything that would make me feel out of it, high, you know, anything, anything out of control. Didn't want it. So they asked me, like, are you in pain? And I was just like croaked, like, yes, you know, <laughs> my throat. <laughs> and uh, she asked me if I wanted something and I just said, Tylenol. And she was like, you're going to want something more than that. And I was like, and shook my head. And so, you know, they told, um, they told me that they would bring me something. And then they took me to the room. They told my husband that all I wanted was Tylenol, but they were pretty sure I'd want something else. And uh, once I came to a little bit more, which I did. So I took like Percocet or something. And I think I was in so much pain anyway that I didn't notice if I felt altered at all. And it probably wasn't enough to make much of a difference. Um, everything went fine after that. I mean, I was sore to be expected, you know, um, but the next five days I was healing. Um, everything from the surgery, surgery sites, all that stuff was okay. Um, but my face was not okay all of a sudden. Um, all of a sudden it would start uh, sometimes like right here and then it would just move across my face and just travel and it would just burn so bad uh, and just cover my like my whole face and I was horrified um, had no idea what was happening to me. I thought urticaria, I must be having an allergic reaction. So I, you know, I get a hold of my allergist and he's like, okay, you know, let's, let's, uh, you know, double your Zyrtec. So now I'm taking four Zyrtec. And um, 
I was like, okay, we'll try that and nothing. Like, you know, next day my face is on fire. I got a fan on me, I'm burning, you know, it's horrible. He he tells me, Let, let's, let's add uh, Pepsid. It's a H2 histamine blocker. So we add Pepsid, um, like 20 milligrams, I think at that point and and nothing it's it's doing nothing and i'm like look i i'm i'm scared i'm in a lot of pain i need to come in you know at that point i i was even though it was winter i was sleeping in my car uh, with the windows down it was like 47 degrees the ac is blowing on high cold i'm shaking um i'm terrified i don't know what's happening to me and i i want to go to the hospital i just want to go to the hospital and find out what's wrong with me so which, you know, couldn't have been great for my surgery, you know, healing either, but, you know, that's what it was. So um, I went to the office and the I had to wear a mask, you know, so um, the breath, uh, my breath inside my mask warmed up my face and immediately I had this crazy, you know, uh, flare just take off. And as soon as I saw it, you know, now I'm in like panic attack because my face looks worse than I've ever seen it before. And I'm like, screw this, give me ice packs, you know, stat, like, you know, the people working there are like, don't worry, ma'am, you know, you have to leave your mask on, you have to do this. And I was like, look at my face, you know, and I'm freaking out. And, you know, they put me in a room and my doctor comes in, he's like, we're just gonna inject you with steroids right now. And I hadn't had steroid injections in over a decade. I was nervous about doing it. I don't do well with anti-inflammatories. Um, uh, but at that point, not having it was more scary. So I was like, go ahead. So they shoot me up with steroids and he tells me, you know, within the next couple of days, you're going to feel so much better. You're going to be so much better, but it, it got worse. And yeah, it got worse. You know, it, <laughs> it was, it was so terrifying. Um, that here they're doing all these things and I'm still getting worse. So at this point, I'm like, okay, we got to do something else. You know, you got to help me. Um, so he gives me Zolaire, uh, which is a, another medication to try to stop allergic response, basically. Um, like, so I try that. Normally with the side effects risks and everything else, like one in a thousand people can have anaphylactic shock taking it like any time that they take it, <laughs> you know, like it never, that risk never goes away, even if you're not allergic to it the first time, you know, I never would have, I never would have had too much anxiety to be like, oh yes, please let, let's try that. But this, I had to stop this. So I was like, yes, just do it. So I, I did it. I waited in there for two hours while they observed me. After that, I was still paranoid, so I waited in the parking lot with my husband another hour, you know, and I started trying to go home. My face starts burning like it's on fire. I have another panic attack, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't do this. And so I got a hotel close to the hospital, and then I'm staying in a hotel, you know, a few minutes from the hospital because I can't go home. I can't go home like this. I can't think I'm on fire. I'm burning alive and no one can tell me why and no one can make it stop. And you know, my doctor, um, my primary care doctor was like, let's get you in the hospital. They take me in there. You know, I'm holding a fan on my face the whole time. I've got lots of doctors coming in and out and looking at me, asking me to move the fan, looking for hives, but not finding any. And not, they're just like, wow, this is really interesting. And that's it, you know, that's all they can say. Like, I'm I'm sorry, this is really interesting, but we don't know, you know, we don't know what this is. We don't know what to do for you, you know? And that's like the last thing that you wanna hear, you know, other than this is terminal, you know? Like, we don't know was like really upsetting. And, you know, they can't keep me there. So like, well, we're gonna continue on with your allergist and, you know, follow up with dermatology, you know, let them do a biopsy. You know, I, I went in and out of the hospital a few times. Um, eventually I started taking Ativan uh, because it was the only thing that would help me to not be as afraid. It didn't help the pain, but it helped me to get some rest and it helped me to not be so terrified um, every time 
my face started burning. And in this case, my face was constantly burning at this point. So it just helped me not, not to be as afraid. Um, didn't stop it all together, but it, it calmed it down. So I got to go home and live with my fans uh, surrounding me all the time. And, and this just, it just went on. Um, so we'll stop there. So that's, that's a long video. I don't, I want to keep going on and on, but it, it got me to that point. Um, we can talk more about my biopsies and the medications that I took. Fortunately, this flare seems to um, have calmed down. It's kind of not progressing too bad. So hopefully it will stay that way. Um, we'll have to see. But thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next time.